And um, we'll, we'll thank you for coming, first of all. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is a continuation of the meeting on the 23rd, which was the first listening session for the community and for the residents and for the stakeholders. And um, we have uh, gathered all of your input and um, we're excited to kind of like share back where the conversation has evolved. So, um, and for those of you who were not in the first meeting, <coughs> spending a little bit of time to get you up to speed as well. And so um, we'll do a little bit of, uh, of an icebreaker. So Stacy will kick us off and um, we'll do an activity that helps us to envision a positive future for the community and like gather some of your ideas around that and really setting the tone for partnership and for community input because you have a role in shaping and creating the future of this town. So um, we want to kind of let that be known straight off the bat. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, Mickey from Mahuna Corp and uh, Dave, Mayor Dave, up there you are, <laughs> up at the front of the room to um, spend a little bit of time presenting kind of like the current state of where, where are we at with the, the this project and um, uh, respond to some of the themes that have come up in terms of your input. And then we're gonna give you time to ask questions. So there are, uh, there, there'll be some interactive activities on the wall where you can write questions and comments and reactions. And then Mickey and Dave will respond to kind of where your head is at and what your thoughts are. Last time there were a lot of questions and I could only imagine there are still going to be lots of questions so we wanna give lots of spaciousness to have a conversation tonight. So please lean in. Um, no question is a bad question. We wanna hear from you. If there's something that uh, you don't wanna ask out in public, you can put it in the anonymous question box right here in the corner of the room on your way out. Um, and then uh, towards the end of the meeting, there are a couple things on the wall that uh, we will have you interact with. One is the mood wall out in the hallway, which you'll see we'll have some dots on it from last time, and that's kind of just like people's sentiments. And so on your way out, you'll have a, a chance to kind of give your sentiments again. And then there's also an opportunity around uh, gathering your contact information around different points of this process in terms of how you would want to be engaged and involved in some of the conversations around possibilities. So we'll get into some of those things as the meeting goes on, but. That is the general flow for the for the evening. Our goal is to be be out of here at the latest at seven, um, and we'll probably finish the the dialogue portion at six forty five. So the last fifteen minutes, you can interact with the wall, and then Mickey, and then also Russell, who's the the head of Huna, is also here to if you want to introduce yourselves, mingle, ask questions, and, and get to know them. So my name is Ariel. Uh, I didn't say that before. I'm Stacy, and we've got Courtney in the back room. <laughs> and again, all of us are here to answer questions. So I need your help, please. And that is to get involved in giving some feedback and maybe maybe using um, showing showing off your wits and humor, if at all. As far as what you what your takeaway. For Whittier is. If you wanted people to take something away from Whittier and put it on a t-shirt or a bumper sticker, what would that be? Now I don't just want to lob that out to you and give you nothing to play with. So that's why we're going to play What's the Tea? So you can, and these are magic post-its by the way, that I've been very excited about as everybody here knows that's been setting up. So it, for instance, maybe you have something that's kind of heartfelt about Whittier. Something like everyone's a neighbor in Whittier. Alaska. Again, imagine like a bumper sticker or t-shirt or something that's funny or punny and it can be a bad pun. I have a great example here for you for a bad pun. I had a tunnel of fun in Whittier, Alaska. Or something that's site specific like I saw the sound in Whittier, Alaska. And if you don't have something that just comes to mind, if you can't really think of anything, just think of giving a structure like Mad Libs. You can fill in the blank, maybe have Whittier, Alaska home of whatever. I survived blank in Whittier, Alaska. Actually, this exercise, if y'all were in last week's, or not last week, a couple of weeks ago, if you were in the meeting, 
that was one of the things that was brought up is that one of the most popular t-shirts at IC Point is the I survived the Zip Rider. Zip Rider. The Zip Rider. Rider. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like the idea was, oh, ha, you could say I survived the tunnel. But maybe there's something else. Again, y'all are from here, so it's what your angle on things that will give it more meaning. Or what happens in Whittier? Blank. It's blown away. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's blown away in winter. You got it right there. Um, and that you need to put on a sticky note and put it up here. Or come for the blank, stay for the blank. So those are ideas if you're kind of trying to hook your mind into something. Now we're going to pass out sharpies and post its. We want to see your ideas up here, and if it helps to get you write anything down anymore, just know there's some amazing raffle stuff. And looking at the size of the room, your odd, the odds are in your favor. So please input things. We'll have this posted. We'll give you a few minutes right now, and you can start posting it before we kick things off. But this will be up, and you can put things up here whenever. Good? Good. 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 participate at all in this? Would you, would you like to participate in this activity? Sure. It's, um, it's kind of like if you had a slogan for this community, what would it be? Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's really about thinking about like what is the possibility of what do you want this town to be. It doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of the future, but it's more about like envisioning okay. and framing. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Cool. Okay, was that? Maybe this gentleman, would you like to? Oh, here's oh you have some. Oh, I've got a little You guys did a great job on the stairs and the sidewalk. That really was appreciated. That, that really Touching back. 
Tunnel vision, I like it, just straight to the point. I met my first sea otter in Whittier. Oh, thank you. Years ago. What happened here and it's blown away? We could charge more to leave. Okay, and Whittier helped you sleep with real waterfall dreams. Okay, there's poets in the room, guys. So keep it coming. We're going to keep the, oh, here we go. You can have a whale of a top tail in Whittier. Ah, okay. Well, that could go, yeah, okay, that could go anyways. We won't go there, but you could have two different versions, I imagine. Um, so just keep them coming, because we'll keep, have, we'll keep the board up here, and we'll get to the real part of the conversation. Generation Alaska, and I live between here a little bit to visit my parents, and I'm in Bellingham, Washington, so we walk back and forth quite a bit. Oh, cool. cool. I uh, split my time between uh, Whittier and Homer. Okay, awesome. And you have a business? Yes, I'm a CETO franchise owner. Cool.
think it makes sense to hear from Nikki and from Dave. Do you want to read that last one up there? <laughs> Cool, so um, take it away, gentlemen. Uh, feel free to kind of set the, set the scene for the audience, knowing that we've got different groups of people that have some varying levels of awareness and exposure to this uh, project. Shall, they, shall we sit or stand? I'm standing here right now just so everybody can hear full well. I'm going to get tired after a while, man. <laughs> So just out of curiosity, how many people were here at the last meeting out of this group? We're here the last, just a show of hands. So we have a few newcomers. So my name is Mickey Richardson, and I head up the creative <coughs> at uh, Huna Totem and Icy Straight Point. So it's just an honor to be here today. Also, for those who didn't meet, uh, Russell Dick is our CEO of Huna Totem. Uh, Native Corp uh, is with Mid Midnight. Uh, also, Chris Laddick is, is here as well, works with us. Chris Laddick. Awesome to, to be here, and uh, I feel like Dave, you and I are like coming back, and we're like going to start our own YouTube channel <laughs> and have to welcome the YouTube audience. Um, so glad to have all those that are participating on online. But uh, so Dave, how, how do we kick this off? Like, do we tell a few jokes? How do we how do we roll out? Uh, well, I'm no good at jokes. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's that list of questions um, that. Uh, Maybe I can give you the themes. Yeah, so they're here. So I, I don't know, Dave, because I'm sure that um, we listened a lot in the last meeting. I was surprised because we had boxes, question boxes around, and then we got a list, a long list, Excel list of questions that went into the box. And also, if you looked at the mood board on the outside on the walking in, you might have noticed that we had a lot of I love it which we love that. And then we also had a lot in the middle that was, I still have questions. So we wanted to make sure that we were really tonight kind of starting to address a lot of those questions. And I'm sure we wrote them down, but Dave, I'm sure you've heard a lot too since the, the pre-Thanksgiving. And what was it on the 23rd? 23rd, yeah. 23rd, yeah. So yeah, I mean, a lot of the questions were, you know, based around, you know, why are we doing this project? What's going on with this project? Why, why, uh, why are we even thinking about? It? My response to that was, it's you know we're looking for stability. Uh, we're looking to secure the future of Whittier. Um, you know, as you know, I mean every every town has roads and infrastructure that they need to take care of, right? They've got uh, streets that they need to pave. They've got water wastewater systems uh, that they need to maintain. Ours here are pretty old. Some of it goes back to World War II. And as you can imagine, some of that stuff is fairly expensive to try and, uh, and, and maintain and to redo. So for instance, if we have to repave our streets, and if you looked at uh, Glacier Avenue completely, you know, that's getting to a point where it's gonna you need to be repaved here pretty soon. And it's gonna cost you know, over a million dollars to go through and there's some people here that would be fine with going back to gravel roads, you know, and, and, and you know, maybe it might be okay for some people, but, um, but you know, there's, there's those of us, you know, that feel like in this day and age, you know, I don't think our public works director would be too happy with having to uh, take care of gravel roads on a regular basis. Um, it, you know, our uh, sewage lagoon is at a point now where it, it's no longer going to meet the current standards have walked by the sewage lagoon lately, you probably smell what I mean, right? You know, you know, you know what's going on there. So, you know, that's going to cost probably in the vicinity of eight million or more. I think is what we we looked at. Um, Chris, you could probably give me some other ideas of some other things that uh, you know we we're looking at that we need to maintain. <coughs> probably the water waste. You know, our water system here has been around for a long time. We have this old. Uh, Reservoir, right? You know that uh, you know that that needs maintenance and so forth. So, you know, there are a lot of things that we need to, to take care of. And you know, our options are we could have bonds. You know, we could have bonds, I guess. That we've already got a bond for the harbor for a project that's not even finished yet. 
this is what you guys are going to develop. You're going to, to come in here and you're going to lay all this out for us. But that's not at all what's going on. You know, here's, it's just the items in red here that you really need now, and that the rest of it is is up to us. You know, as you can see here, the, what's in blue is really the city of Wigger's responsibility. And the, what do you call that, teal? Yeah, yeah, we, we suggested some other areas, but that doesn't mean that that's fixed either. Like it's, it's a drawing, a canvas that can be shaped any way the city determines that they want. Um, and I, I come back to the area in red, you know, like we need that, and basically that creates a financial opportunity to take care of other infrastructure things, but also to look at what the future might be. And I'll come back to that, to, to the board that we have over on the side too, just about the timing of that. But, um, but if we decided that we didn't want all of that, if we decided that that would bring too much congestion into what you're, as a community, then we don't necessarily have to do that. No. That, that's not gonna upset yep. your plan. No, it doesn't upset us at all. In fact, because we are part of our model is balance, right? So we want to make sure that we're providing balance in, in the concepts that move forward. Um, which also reminds me of a comment you made earlier about because traffic was one of those revolving themes that we heard. And you had made a, a mention earlier about how, you know, right now you have princess coming in and the way ships depart and, and what the, that traffic model is and how that affects community and maybe you can kind of reiterate for the group what your your thoughts or feedback well it was you know the fact that you've already been working with princess and that you know that there you realize that there has to be a balance between the amount of traffic that comes in here that's not going to be of any benefit to your customers that they don't want to get off a boat and have to stand around and wait forever to try and, and get out of here that, that doesn't make any sense so you're going to lose a lot of customers um, yeah, we talked about how uh, that that uh, it's that cooperation you know, that, that we'll have with your other the partners here uh, is going to be really key to the success of living in this community, right, and, and operating this community. Yeah, and so and as we look at it too, as part of our part of our model is also is having this nice separation from the downtown. And also right now, the facility that's happening um, over in this area that you're having guests that are essentially walking across the street and they're looping buses and all those things that are affecting the community. And we're trying to be a little bit smarter about it in that. And as we talked about in the last meeting, our model has always been to make um, not bus parking the center of attention. We always have that, what we call back of the house, right? And so we wanted to have a positive guest experience where they have this waterfront experience, but also that we have a, a train depot is in the phase one because we want them to have a warm, dry place. We call it the train depot, but it really is a community building. Um, a warm, dry place for them to meet. And also there's museum elements in there, things that people will become educated about the area and the environment that they've, they've cruised in or, or will be cruising out of. And then also, like we said, it's always about balance, meaning um, you know, before, before in the past, we heard there were like zero people coming off the ship and coming into town and spending money. And we heard that that was a desire of the community. Like, how do we get a little bit more? So it's about how do we figure out what that balance is? And we had proposed like a trolley system that would take people into town. Now we proposed it and thought that might be a good idea, but as you figure out how many people you want and where you'd like them to be, all of that is just defined by, by uh, the community. But in the meantime, uh, we have a place that the community can meet and also that people aren't just uh, as someone said downtown uh, earlier before the meeting they said you know there was no even standing space for where they were, were meeting their train to depart and we just wanted to make sure that we provide the, a nice warm dry positive experience that also doubled up as a community space as well right so right now you know princess they their boats come in just after midnight and typically their passengers are gone by, you guys probably know better than me, but you know, typically by uh, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock or so in the morning. And you know, for a lot of us that, uh, you know, like on a, on a Saturday morning who may not get up until nine o'clock or something like that on a, on, a, on a weekend, we don't even see, you know, they, they have no impact on our lives whatsoever. This is the same thing, right? You know, that the, the timing of these boats, this will be, I mean, even less so because this is gonna be down at the head of the bay rather than, you know, basically right in the core area of town. 
you know, those boats will probably come in probably right after midnight, something like that. And, and a lot of those people, you know, are going to get off that boat and they're going to uh, probably be out of here until some of this other stuff gets developed. If we choose that to happen, um, it's going to be the same thing. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, like I was saying before, you know, right now uh, it's the impact is zero right now. Well, two times zero is still zero, right? It's, it's still not going to really affect us that much. It, it's really going to be up to us to determine, do we want some of those passengers to stick around for a while? Do we want to have that? What are we going to develop for? Are we going to do, we really don't want them to cruise around in buses and stare up at, uh, at uh, DTI, you know, like we're in a fishbowl or anything like that. But we can choose to, to limit that if we want to. Um, there are some business owners that are going to say, nah, you know, no, we, we want to, you know, our businesses are going to thrive. We want some, uh, a trolley system or something like that to bring some of those in here. But do we want 3,000 people to come at a time? Mm, probably not. So there's probably ways that, that they can limit that and, and advertise that and work it out so that it doesn't affect us any more than we really want it to affect us. Yeah. And um, which made me also think, too, that as we were talking last community meeting, there was, you know, the suggestions about how to create flow and traffic to alleviate some of those traffic. And someone, I don't know if the, the lovely lady was here, she just raised her hand and said, can the tunnel open like an hour earlier? And you go, oh yeah, well, if there's more traffic, then that makes sense and a reason to create the revenue that allows that to happen. But we have to first get through essentially phase one and then we can say, okay, so where, where do we sit on the traffic flow and how do we take the input and then implement those things and the balance that we, we think will work uh, with the community. That, uh, really not we think, but the collective group, you, yeah. you here and Whittier think um, about how do we make those things happen to make it successful and be the right balance. So um, just I, I mean, out of curiosity right now, is there, you know, what, what are the main, can, can somebody just, if you don't mind, somebody raise your hand and talk about it. Suzanne, I think you've yeah. got some reservations right now of this project. Could you? kind of give a couple of your ideas out there. Um, one of the major ones is going to be the congestion down there. Um, another one is the, it's, I mean, we know that something's going to happen down there, but it is our last remaining undisturbed shoreline where we have marine life, we have terrestrial life down there. A lot of animals that mm -hmm. people in this town don't even know we have. Um, and we'll just destroy that. I mean, number one, a gondola does not belong going to the top of Major's Mountain. It's it's not a viable place. Possibly over on that side, but no. But let's. It's, but like, but that's, that, gotcha. But once again, the time thing, yeah. Con congestion is the huge. It is one of the big things I You're hear a lot. You're going to have to build a whole new road system down in there to handle your your traffic, your flow. Everybody's trying to funnel into that little tunnel. There was a day last summer when there were no TOs out here or, or the traffic directors. And I think people had gotten off the ferry or they had gotten off the Klondike. I was 75 cars back you know, trying to get to the tunnel just as a resident because none of these people knew to pull up into lane one, lane two. So I pulled around all of them. I stuck my hand. I said, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, I talked to some guy who I didn't speak read. English. And so I pulled around all of them. I got between the sports car and a pickup truck. And I went right up into lane three. Yeah. And they all followed me like lemons. Yeah, and just remember that, you know, right now, part of the problems, so a lot of the problems that we've had is we simply don't have the resources here, right? We don't. We, we just don't. We don't. But this is how we get those resources, right? That, that's what you have to understand. Is this, this type of project will develop the type of revenue that we need to have those revenues to solve our existing problem. You know, not just, you know, securing our future, but that'll help us solve some of those existing problems. You also mentioned the the, the, bait, the shore down there, and I probably build more bonfires down there than just about anybody. I mean, when I, I'm usually the only one down there, or my group of friends, I'm usually the first one there. I'm usually the last one to leave. I, trust me, you know that's been a big concern of mine as well. But you know what I'm seeing with this plan is, is if anything, we will have better access down there. Right now, there's a couple of uh, fire pits that Vicar and I installed down there, right? That that's what we have to work with. Can you imagine how that could be improved down there so that 
it, it would be more than just those two fire pits, but there, there would be better access for other people as well. Go ahead. Don't kill the thing you love, though. I mean, bring in thousands of people, you, you've killed it. People yep. aren't going to see the wolverines that live down there. They're not going to see the mountain goats on the top of the mountain. They're not going to see the seals and the sea lions out there if you just don't have a right. good plan for this. Right. And, and I would really like to see, okay, phase one, you've got your cruise ship dock and maybe your harbor's in there and some, some uh, associated structures. Um, I would like to see the city go through every single possible phase and yay or nay it because some of this stuff is really, I hate to say this, it's like Disneyland. We're not Una, we're Whittier, we're a much smaller community yeah. and the, the city has to they've, they've got that they've got that message right it, 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 again you know a lot of this conceptual plan that they've given us was based on what we told them you know in our comprehensive plan right we told them that you know there are things that we want to develop and they've said well, look at all these great things that we could help you develop but it, it, they're not they're not uh, telling us that that has to happen Charlie, jump in real quick. Yeah, okay. I, I just some, um, you know, I, I was thinking about your traffic issue in the tunnel and not having the right hands, and um, I'm reminded of uh, Juno in the summer because uh, what we have, you know, in that community, there are a lot more ships there, a lot more people getting off, but um, all of the crosswalk attendees, all of the traffic people, is all something that's been created um, in response to um, it's called TVMP, but the tourism response that. Um, has been in place there and there's a hotline and things that happen and those are the results of saying hey we need the hands and then part of you know the the money that's coming in goes to support those needs about how do we move traffic flow and and i'm really excited I'm, you're you're getting me really excited about this board over here because i think a lot of what you're saying is going to be encapsulated on this this flow about you, as you said, you know, how do you take input all the, all the way along? Yeah. And so I, I think that I think that we're there. Um, and, then, and, and also, well, you mentioned Juno, and I know Jamie comes from Juno, and she's seen you know the effects uh, down there in Juno, and, and they haven't all been good down there in Juno, right? Mm -hmm. But that's those cruise ships land right there in the downtown yeah. area. That's kind of the beauty of this is that separation that we can. Yeah, and that was that's part of our model is that. We, we believe that there should be a separation. And what's happened in Juneau, as we like to explain it, is that the ships are going into existing infrastructure, right? Meaning that, that they are getting kind of pushed into, this is your space and this is the way your space will be. And it's been that way for since cruise ships first started coming to Alaska over 100 years ago. And the beauty of what we've done even at Icy Street Point and, and why we really like the head of the bay is because it's a clean slate. You can imagine whatever and the best possibilities and to create that opposed to saying oh well your dock has to go here and the people have to walk here and all of that and also the other thing i would point out too is that um one because i live in juno and one of one of the downsides is that a lot of what happens in that area is not reflected by the community meaning like for example at ice street point all of our retail shops have to be alaskan owned we don't allow them and that that basically changes when you say, you know what, if there's gonna be a business here, somebody who lives here locally can own that and operate that and it's gonna affect their family and affect their future opposed to having like uh, an international diamond <laughs> retailer there. Yeah. Like we, we would like to say that let's, this is an area for the community to develop and figure that out, so. Charlene, I saw you raise your hand for a second. Did you have a comment? <laughs> <laughs> just one, just one, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You know, I've, I've lived here long enough, and surprisingly, we have had development here. But it's haphazard development, and has there not been organized development? And uh, at one time, I actually had the money in hand to build the ramps at the head of the bay. It was shovel ready, everybody had approved it, DNR, the whole schmear. And the last minute, they took the money away from the head of the bay to repair the East Lawn Track, rather than going out and finding the money to do the lawn tram, they just grabbed a pot of money that was there. So, and I know that 
Dave and I both have watched this. I have been through a lot of development and this, I consider this probably the last chance for the Whittier to control the development that's happening in its community. It's, uh, it's been just, it, it's just not, it, and we've had master plans, but people uh, take those master plans, we have new city managers, new council, new this, and nothing ever gets done with it. Yeah, yeah we have had a, a lot of turnover in that. And yeah. lots of millions of dollars spent on studies at the head of the bay, which uh, it has to be done. But there are, but if we don't protect that, and that all becomes to the point where Smitty's Cove is now gone. If you were ever here, when you seen Smitty's Cove, was the most beautiful little grotto you ever saw. Now it's a junk hole. It's destroyed. And our kids used to go down, their families did picnics. Waikiki Beach, gone. If we don't do something up at the head of the bay that's not only going to be good for our tourism and our community, but a place where our people can go, Whittier is going to be landlocked. That's our last chance to make sure that Whittier has access to our waters. Yeah, Charlie, you mentioned, you mentioned tourism and you know the state of Alaska, as a, and a lot of us know, is uh, really dependent upon oil for revenue. I think it's like 85-90% of our, our revenue in the state is developed from oil taxes. And, you know, we've talked for a long time about, you know, what do we do, you know, as oil goes away, you know, what's the next step? And, you know, the first thing that comes up is tourism. You know, how do tourists get to Alaska? Well, they, they get here either by plane or they get here by cruise ship. You know, and this is kind of our way of being able to help you know, to contribute to that, right? This is kind of one of our our ways of being able to contribute to, away from oil dependency here in Alaska. And, it, and the, the tourism can be controlled. It doesn't have to have open to everything because we know that Whittier is, is a small community and only so many people can come in. And that has to be controlled, uh, whether, and I don't care, so it's, it's a state or a federal highway, it doesn't matter. We can only put so many people in here, like the fire marshal says, only so many people in the building. Unless we do something like getting that dirt mover in here that gobbles up holes and gets it put back in so we have more than one lane. But Whittier has got to, it, this needs to go step by step with the community and uh, I'm, this is our last chance to make sure, because what's gonna happen, if this doesn't happen, other people are gonna come in here and they're gonna do it for us. I or mean, or they'll just look at we, the fact that we bypassed this opportunity and they're gonna say, yeah, we yeah have, forget we it, have, you know, these guys are never going to accept it. Hang on just a second, uh, Suzanne, I just wanna go through some of these, um, make sure that everyone understands that we have heard a lot of these issues, and I just wanna touch on, touch on these themes real quick. Um, you know, that, that there has been, at least from the residents, you know, there's been a lot of positive reactions from residents, people that understand our current situation and uh, understand, you know, what our needs are gonna be in the future. That um, there's uh, concern about inclusion and engagement of residents and stakeholders, right? And, and that's one of the reasons we're having a meeting like this, why we had a meeting on the 23rd, I think some of you were even at the last city council meeting or special city council meeting. Um, you know, we're tr you know we're trying to allow people to, to express their concerns and um, and trying to get information out there because it's it's a complicated you know I, I think issue here, especially when you look at the way it's presented and the different uh, phases and and so forth. So we want to make sure that there's plenty of opportunity for people to try and get their head wrapped around the issue. Dave, uh, where are you going to start? With the project? Where? The, the project is going to be the cruise ship dock, right? That's that's the starting point. That's really the only necessary component right now. That That's the decision that they need from us right now um, because th they're hoping to generate revenue in the year 2023. If, if, if I read that correctly, is that? The end of 2023, yeah. Of 2023. Obviously we know that there's 
permitting processes and all these timelines that have to kind of come together. And I don't know if you noticed, but you guys have a really impressive winter here, and that makes things <laughs> difficult. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. I, I love it, but it, for construction purposes, yes. that can change the timeline. If you don't hit certain, then it pushes it back. Um, I, can I just jump over here real quick? Yeah. How are we doing on time, Eric? Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe go for seven minutes and then we'll okay. pause okay. for any questions. All right, because I just thought I would come over here because this, Good. Um, I, I love this uh, organic flow here. So, um, so we're basically right here, and everywhere you see a circle here on the board is a public input process for you and the, the citizens of and, and Whittier. And um, when we develop this, like there are lots of branches off of this organic flow that would happen throughout the development cycle, right? And I just did a little quick math, and each one of these input areas really represent three or more input opportunities that would happen along the way throughout the process. And also, we're here at the cruise ship dock, right? And if we don't get past here, none of these other things can happen, right? So almost this is like a natural progression of this project. And if you will, without putting dates on here, this is also a timeline, meaning that you want, we might get to here, right? Uh, we get to here. And then of course, um, you know, the boardwalk is part of that phase one and there's businesses opportunities. And so there's a whole discussion group that could happen around here, what that looks like. Um, and that's, and then also, you know, traffic is gonna be public spaces. How do we utilize the train depot? And so everywhere here is an opportunity to have another, as you said, there's a series of input opportunities for everyone to contribute to what the vision moving forward. But knowing that this is really phase one and if we don't get past phase one, then there's no need to have all these other beautiful conversations along the way, because um, you have to have the revenue that's created from the from the cruise ship infrastructure there. And like you said, all of these things, obviously, um, traffic flow is pretty pretty critical, right? That's going to be a conversation that happens. Um, but maybe, for example, um, parking, which could include boat parking, bus parking, some of that may not may not materialize. It may never be in, in, the, in the ultimate master plan. Obviously, I know there's big passion about trails and wildlife and how do we access and, and do that in the right way. And we put this on here, it says salmon rearing, but that's really more about how are we impacting the areas. And so we wanted to make sure that everything was kind of included, but this just doesn't represent one conversation. It's a series of conversations that will happen uh, along the way. And just kind of looking at this organic chart as really a timeline of opportunities that has public input and and says as you were suggesting that there was a yes no opportunity along the way as we develop out but knowing that you know we're really focused in this mini yeah. process in just phase one yeah that's a real good uh, visual representation of the process there and the, and the timeline and so that goes with what i was just talking about inclusion and engagement of residents and stakeholders uh, the next item is Whittier's capacity to manage congestion, which you, you mentioned as well. And I think one of the concerns then would be accountability, right? You know, even though we talk about congestion and, and these concerns, you know, how, you know, how do we hold Kuna accountable for making sure that some of these ideas are put into place? Um, yeah, yeah, can you answer that? Yeah, well, I think it's in every, every stakeholder's interest for the city of Whittier our guests and our experience to have a positive experience as they're moving through, right? <clears throat> um, excuse me, we're very we're, we're very focused on this area because for this to work, we don't look just look at, for example, we just don't look at traffic area through the, through the tunnel. Um, there's traffic patterns that will happen out on the other side of the tunnel, Bear Valley. How are we splitting traffic at the fork, right? Will some go north? Will some go south? What's the timing? of when the ships come in and how do we utilize space that doesn't and time that doesn't affect the community. All those conversations are already happening because obviously if you're gonna build this, you have to know some areas about how you're gonna solve this prop this this challenge here. But also I think there's some really cool opportunities, you know, um, that, that happen here. As you mentioned, it's a gated community. You can have um, I would have put up there on the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? <laughs> you you have the ability to create this beautiful experience as you drive out and maintaining that is, is part of a, a part of this flow and as you mentioned how do you 
Um, we, we obviously in our plan, you know, it's, it's hard to put a bus parking lot without figuring out where the infrastructure is as far as roadways to make sure that you can move traffic to those areas and move people seamlessly. And that's like we said, we wanted to move the train into the train depot. So we're, that's not in the middle of downtown. It's not blocking the crossing with cars. We try to simplify that process. Obviously, we don't have that all figured out yet because we still have to get through here and then we can move on through the, through the rest of the process. Yeah. So how many people know that when you're in the middle of the tunnel that you're 3,000 feet underground? <laughs> 3,000 feet? I didn't know that. 3,000 feet underground. Yeah. So when they redid the tunnel, they had to have mining certificates in order to work in the tunnel. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, Chris has something to add. Yeah, Chris. Um, there's also a massive amount of work for the city in this process. Right. Timing, the, the boat harbor, the, the uh, breakwater, how you're going to develop that whole area. And one way to handle that is a strategic plan for every year because this is a multi-year project um, and it's about to tax the city employees if this moves forward. There's going to be a lot of council meetings. There's going to be a lot of planning commission meetings. Yes. And and, no, and I, no planning commission meetings? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're also talking about, and Chris, you probably just want to talk, talk about this, but you know, we're going to have to change as a, as a, as a city administration. Right? We're going to have to adapt to this somehow. We, we're not going to continue forward with the way we are right now. Chris, I think you're going to mention something about Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, kind of along the lines of what Chris was saying, um, if you look, Huna does have a Huna economic development plan that has a lot of elements that we're talking about here. You know, a parking plan is an element of that. A small business development plan is an element of that. So there will be opportunities for, you know, stakeholders in each of those areas to participate in that planning process. Mm -hmm. And as Chris said, it's complicated because there are so many moving parts. But that's what I love about this graphic is it kind of gives those of us that aren't very visual that really nice, um, you know, way of seeing at where those decision points are and then what we need to do to plan ahead for those. Yeah. And, and Chris, can I, can I just take it to 11 for one second? Yeah. Um, and because that's why we have these little clever envelopes here. Um, and that is that because um, as Chris had talked about this, this process is that, you know, um, I'm sure, I am forgot her first name. Trey. Trey. I'm sure Trey is, is very interested in this part, right? But you're probably not so interested in community spaces. I don't know, I'm just guessing, right, maybe you right. are. But, um, and that's why we have the little lovely cards is that Trey could say, I wanna be in this conversation here and really just having a way so that you know that you're gonna be included with the city in the process is you just put your name and the most convenient way you like to be contacted, whether that be a, like a cell number or email address, and then you just put it in the, afterwards so it's it's a it's a lovely graphic um but also it serves a purpose so that um everyone can participate in the areas that they would like to participate and i'll come back to also what chris was saying is that um if we look at this and we say just this for us is really we're looking at two and a half to three year process right to just make this happen it could take many moons to get to this right because there's going to be process along the way and input along the way. And also, um, there might be, as we said earlier, there might be some other ideas that come in and fill in these other spaces so that you say, hey, we're missing something and we need to make sure that we're including the other. Yeah. So um, this, this, is a, is, this, this board is only eight feet long, but it represents um, a lot of time that, and that a lot is, of work. That is one of the comments that I've heard, though, is some people feel that you know, we're putting the cart before the horse. We should have this plan fully developed before you know we commit to anything like this and the problem is is that you know you'll you, we could yeah you know, let's just say that we could develop a plan right here it'll get changed 50 times by the time we got to the end there's no way you could fully develop a plan first ahead of time I think we, that the, that process just is, is one that will evolve as we do more studies as permitting comes through we'll figure out what uh, what's possible what's not possible and that'll help lead those discussions. But 
I, I don't think we're putting the cart before the horse. I think that the, this uh, first initial phase is what gets us started, and then we can start looking at what the possibilities are. Suzanne, real quick, I got to keep going. Yeah, I, can I just? Have, real, you, have you started an environmental yeah, impact statement? Sure. Has any of that work been started? Has it been no, looking? because we don't have a commitment. Yet. Right. And are you making a decision at the next city council meeting, or is this going to continue going? Are you going to? We'll, we'll make a decision at the next city council meeting as to whether or not we want to continue with the phase one. Is it only the phase one of this project? Right. That that is where the goal is right now. Is do we see this as a as a viable opportunity for us? A viable option for us? Is the community behind it? Does the community feel like we've got that that phase one? Even if we just limit it to phase one, th does the community see that that is our path to the future for the city of Whittier? That's all that we have to decide on. And that will let them start that process of getting the environmental studies, the permitting process, and those kind of things. So, so Dave, that's been the problem in the past, is that a big picture and no place to start. No place to start, but now we have a place to start. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just can I just two, Go ahead. two things. Um, we call it we call it Una the story, right? Which is um, we may not know all of the elements, right? But we know what the story should look like. Mm -hmm. And with Whittier, you have the comprehensive plan, which is the baseline for your story, right? Right. And what gets developed along the way uh, might change, but we have a general sense of where the story is going. And that's a good plan that was set forth in the comprehensive plan. And we'd say, you know, one thing that we don't want to let go in our development process that is the core of our story, right? Yeah. Is we're going to carry that story all the way through because otherwise it becomes disjointed. And as you say, you start one process and then it stops and it never moves forward because you lost sight of what the original story was supposed to be. Yeah. 2022 is the time we look at the, at the comprehensive plan every two years and change it. So, um, and also, you know, uh, it, it's it's great, and but you also have to have a financial commitment to make those things move forward, as you found out. You know, so that's part part of what we bring to phase one. Play. So, so right now we're just looking at at phase one. We realize that phase one is going to generate the the property taxes, the CPV funds, the things that um, we're going to need to be able to. Continue, you know, for the city to be able to survive and be able to pave streets and be able to take care of things in the future. The rest of it will develop along the way, as needed. And then, again, you know, uh, Princess has very little impact on us right now. You know, Phase One overall is going to have very little impact on the, the, the residents of the city of Whittier. Um, so two times zero is zero. Right? It's still going to be very little impact. Yeah, Dave, you have a quick question. Yeah, it, uh, Russell, right? Uh, Mickey. Uh, Mickey, that's right. right. Um, I, I just can't help but think back to all of the comprehensive plans that I've been a witness to and been a part of over 20 years. And these things have gone from the gap. And when I'm looking at this flow chart over here, almost every one of these has been on a comprehensive plan at one time or another. But nothing ever got done. The fish viewing spot over there, Charlene Absolutely. and Nancy Davidson were involved in that. Uh, as far as salmon rearing, that was a project that they pushed, and I worked with the fish and game trying to get that going at the head of the day. Housing and lodging, there was a city manager about 15 years ago who came up with a plan that's very similar to this, but on a much lower scale. This is much more elaborate, much more well developed, but there were basically some lodges over there, uh, and there were some trail systems, and this individual was a very forward thinker here too. As far as history here, I know uh, there's some people in this group who've been here, Charlene, over 50 years, and, and uh, one of the individuals who was here, I don't see him right now, but he was raised here, uh, and, and of course, other ones here have been, been here when Whittier didn't have tunnel access and were able to take advantage a lot of the really unique things that, that Whittier has to offer. But now we have a road that's going out towards Shotgun Hill. And a lot of the things, a lot of the outdoor activities, a lot of the hiking in some of the mountainous areas over there can be done there. You can see goats over there, you can see bull rings, you can see ptarmigan. 
there's a lot of wildlife out in those areas, and hopefully, you know, we can keep that. Uh, the the other thing is there is there are two holes in that within that mountain. There's the tunnel that we're all familiar with, and there's a smaller one. Well, when you talk about congestion, it's not a far leap to think of DOT, state DOT, or the feds saying, hey, there's a real need for an additional tunnel, expanding the second tunnel, and maybe also taking care of some of the railroad uh, conflicts that, that we have there, too. So again, this, I think, is not the last, but in my view, it's the best opportunity we've had so far to piggyback and yeah. Dave, you mentioned the railroad. I know we have somebody from the railroad here. And I, I think it's important to mention that you know, the railroad is a very important uh, component of our community here. They're a very important business partner of ours, community partner of ours. And, um, you know, we do want to, we want this to uh, work out for the railroad as well, right? That, that, uh, that that's an important thing that we're aware of. Um, I know some of the things that we've heard in the past, you know, may, may not seem that way. I know that, uh, you know, there's a long history and so forth, but um, you know, just, just want to make sure that that's clear that in order for this to work, you know, we have to have a really strong partnership with the railroad, speaking of railroad, uh, and Tom wants to <laughs> uh, um, it, It's really important that we, we cooperate fully and we don't have an adversarial relationship. It's got to work out with the railroad. First thing I think you should do is to figure out what you want to do up there and have it zoned. Because right now, it, and I have been, it took me eight years to get the tide lab built. I don't want to take eight years to get the head of the wave. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of work to do up there. Let me keep going on some of these other um, topics here just to make sure that everybody knows that you know, we've heard uh, through the questions that uh, have come through. Expanded business opportunities. Uh, this is a theme. Local businesses are curious how their businesses may be impacted by increased tourism to the city and the surrounding area. They have voice that is important to them, that they are both able to handle increased traffic and that their business is not negatively affected by competition, overcrowding, or new limitations such as decreased catch quotas, you know, for uh, some of the charter boat captains. Uh, the next subject is employment and housing opportunities. Wigan residents have many questions about the impact of housing, both for existing community members and for possible incoming new employees. Res residents prefer that job opportunities prioritize locals and that additional housing is made accessible for incoming employees. And you know, of course, that's that'll be obviously uh, something that we'll have to deal with. Um, there's lots of different opportunities and lots of different options for us to be able to overcome that. that I think will be good. I think one of the concerns I've heard is that it's going to drive up um, housing costs here. And, you know, that's always a possibility. I think we have to remember that this is still Whittier, Alaska. You know, this is still, um, the weather isn't going to change here. You know, the, the tunnel situation probably isn't going to change here. This building, you know, is was it 70 years old now, you know. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things that affect, that will continue to affect housing costs here. Um, and, and just want to make sure that people consider all of those things as well. Um, the, and the last thing is careful consideration of environmental impact. And, and this is really important. Both Whittier residents and community stakeholders, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, etc., have expressed the importance of protecting Whittier's natural environment which includes preserving fish spawning grounds, maintaining access to recreational areas, and including the beach and monitoring air quality. So, you know, these are all things that I know have been considered. I know that Princess right now is looking at cold ironing their ships as they come in. I think that um, that Norwegian Cruise Lines is thinking the same thing, and that's big because. Um, there are other communities that don't have, they're not connected to a, a power grid like we are, and they can't, you know, they, they don't have the energy power capacity <coughs> to be able to have cruise ships come in and coal iron. We actually have that here. And, and I'm sure that you guys Electric would be happy, more than happy to sell, you know, that extra power. So, um, I, I mean, I just, I'm kind of excited about that. I think that that's uh, a really cool issue out of all of this. And then of course, you know, we heard you talk about what in Juno, something that, that the cruise ships were dumping waste uh, there in the harbor. I, 
they're kind of unsubstantiated, but I, I can understand that um, you know there is they have to follow strict guidelines. The cruise industry does, and you know, and there will definitely be monitoring uh, uh, as far as that's concerned. And it's going to be up to us and our organizations to make sure that you know that that rules are followed and that uh, that there's some accountability. Might be a good time to reactivate with your watershed cops. Like it. Yeah, and I, I just want to also say that a lot of those things that you're reading off, um, I know Chris and Jackie, uh, you know, they put a lot of time into building a, basically a frequently asked questions document that was built out. And all those things you're reading, there were questions and, and then the answer. So all the questions that came in the last meeting were then covered in that document with corresponding answers. And even the environmental one, because uh, I got that one kicked over as well as I put in there three different great resources to read about what happened in Ketchikan when they were studying fecal matter because they thought that was coming from the ship and it turns out that it wasn't. They did some DNA testing and it. it's not from a ship. Um, but there, the, as we looked at those issues and then also emissions and where the future of the industry is going um, and also about, I don't know that uh, many people know that every ship that comes to Alaska has an Alaskan pilot on board and part of their job is to monitor the systems and that's how they were discovered that you know, sometimes you have some bad apples and they try to cut corners. Um, obviously they were caught, It was there's an article that's from uh, Alaska that um, talks about the carnival incident and they were charged $40 million and the judge put a pretty hefty fine on them and said, you know, if this happens again, basically all of your ships, that means carnival, the funnel brand as I call it, the fun ships, you know, Holland, Princess would all no longer be allowed to sail in U.S. waters. Yeah. So there was some pretty strict, um, meaningful meat that was put on that judgment against them. So I put that article in there so you can read all those things. And also, I really encourage um, the sustainability plan because as all of this industry moves forward, every year they have milestones that they have to hit. And like you were saying, having shore power is one of those milestones that is expected and will cut in the future some cruise ports from no longer being viable because you have to have, um, by, to reduce your emissions, you have to be able to shut that ship off when you're in port. Yeah, so I, that's, yeah. that's really important to the future of the industry. And that sustainability uh, document talks about the other things they're doing about oceans and programs they're supporting here in Alaska, as well as the, the technology that's being installed on each ship and how that's changed and those things that are looking forward you know, over the next 10 plus years. Yeah, I realize I just threw out that term uh, cold ironing and that gives, yeah, this, you kind of explained it, that that is when ships come into port and that they don't have to run their generators and that their emissions, right, are, are not uh, polluting the air. So yeah, I'm glad you made that more clear. Yep, yeah. um, how are we so, doing on time? Yeah, so well, actually the perfect time just for a quick um, pause and have you write down some of your questions, some of your reactions. Um, we're going to just spend, because that allows us to get more input from you all at once. And so if you have a question, I see a couple hands up, um, please put it, uh, even if you want to turn to somebody and kind of process a little bit of what you're hearing to help uh, give you some ideas to put on post-its, um, we'd like you to, uh, you can put them here, up here at the front of the room, or you can put them back here on the good questions wall. And so we're going to just spend about a 10 minute 10 minute period and then we're going to reconvene with a second kind of round of Q&A before we... Yep. And, and for those that are online as well, um, look here to the camera. Um, <laughs> we would like for you to post your questions online as well. So post your questions and then we'll take some questions online and then from the board in the room. So 10 minutes and that allows us to go to the rest of the room. And Jackie, a lot of this stuff is going to post it on our website, correct? Yes. yes. Um, after after tonight's meeting, we'll take when it, whatever questions have been given for this evening, add them to our questions and answers, and there will be a link on our webpage, and we'll make sure social media-wise. WhittierAlaska.gov. WhittierAlaska.gov. Okay. Yeah, we'll come back. Is that where I find you? And please don't hesitate to throw questions up here. Where do I get there?